Hello beautiful plant people. Welcome back to Rooting Mindfully. My name is Yana and today we're going to talk about the easy or the easy to me uncommon house plants in my collection. So stay tuned. All right, so today I picked five uncommon houseplants in my collection that are easy or easy to me to be able to take care of and maintain. Now, I could have picked more. I do have a couple that would be honorable mentions, but I just wanted to keep it at five because anytime I tend to pick any more plants than that, I get my numbers all mixed up. So <laughs> we're going to stick with five, keep it nice and simple. So let's get started. So the first plant I have is my Anthurium clarinervium. And I hope you can see this in camera. I love this plant very much because it just has the biggest leaf potential out of you know most of my uncommon plants. The leaves can get very big on this plant. They're you know the size of my head. This plant also tends to be pest resistant. Um, it did have a couple run-ins with thrip, but as you can see, the leaf still looks really good for having come into contact with thrips. Now, this plant does drink a lot of water, so I do have to keep an eye on it, especially when it's putting out a new leaf, which is this one right here. So anytime you see that there's a new leaf coming on this plant, you do wanna make sure that you're keeping up on the watering. But other than that, this is a very easy going plant. I just love the massive size of the leaves and the, you know, the different texture and the velvetiness that it adds to my collection. So this would be my number one, the Anthurium clarinervium. So number two for my easy uncommon house plants would be the Philodendron melanochrysum varicosum cross. This plant is just absolutely gorgeous. This one also had an issue with thrips, but it was very easy to treat on this one as well as the clarinervium, which is another you know reason why I like those two. I feel like I only sprayed these once and then the issue was gone, but it did have a little damage here. But as you can see, it's not very noticeable, which is why I really love this plant. This one, again, I do have to water keep an eye on the watering, but you can just see the potential that this plant has, the velvetiness of the leaves, how they are just so soft. And I love having these two put together because the two textures and the leaf pattern just look really nice, you know, when they sit side by side. So I really like this plant. It doesn't give me any difficulty. The leaves always come out with no marring, I don't have to worry about, you know, like the humidity and the leaf coming out all crumpled. It's just a very easy going plant and it just never gives me a hard time. The third plant I have here is my Philodendron Squamiferum. This plant, it just grows and grows. I love the furry petioles how they go from red to green. Of course, if you give it a good amount of light, the petioles are very short. The leaves come out super shiny. I love the horse head nature. This one is a more juvenile leaf because you can tell by the lobes at the top of the plant. This leaf that it gave me here is the biggest one that it's given me. And you can tell that it's getting more mature and the leaf is actually a very decent size. I actually have to give this one a moss pole just so I can be able to support it because you can see it's a little wobbly, but this plant is just so easy going. The leaves come out bigger the more light that you give it. And I just, I really love these hairy petioles. They're so soft. But this would be my number three. It's always putting out a new leaf as you can see here. But this is just a very interesting plant. I also had this one, you know, closer to the other ones that had a thrip issue and this one didn't get affected at all. So that was very interesting to, to see that as well. 
fifth plant I have would be this variegated burl marks. This plant is just so cute. I love it. And at first, this plant was putting out, you know, like the green leaves. And they were little green leaves. But then I moved this plant to my northwest window and under another grow light. And it's just been putting out these beautiful variegated leaves. And here's another one. So I do plan to give this plant more light because the more light you give it, the more variegation you will get in the leaves, the bigger the leaves will get. It's also putting out a new leaf here, if you can see that. And it's got some ones here and here. So it is putting out a good amount of growth. It's got one here as well. So this one's a very fast grower. It is putting out leaves constantly, about three at a time. And I just love the surprise of seeing what kind of variegation I'm gonna get on this plant. But it seems as though I'm getting like half variegation. But it's so pretty. I'm definitely gonna put this one outside in the summer because in the summer I'll get like a creamier or white leaves. Cause I noticed with these variegated plants, if you give them more light, you can alter the yellow variegation to more of a cream or white variegation. So I'm gonna experiment with this one over the summer and I'm gonna have to be very careful not to burn it. So we'll see how that goes in the summer. And my last plant would be this big philodendron adabapawensi. This plant is just so magnificent. This plant never gives me any difficulty the leaves are just absolutely gorgeous and shiny, and I just love it. I love the backing, how it's just that nice, deep burgundy. Mm. That burgundy would be a very nice nail color. <laughs> anyway, this plant is just so beautiful. This one also drinks a lot of water, but considering how big these leaves are getting, I can kind of understand why. But sometimes I have to water this plant twice a week. So I do have to make sure that I'm keeping an eye on this plant. And I, I'm going to have to put this one on a pole as well because it's very top heavy with the size that these leaves are coming out. But this is just an awesome plant to have. I also don't have uh, difficulty with pests on this one either. So as you can see, there's a running theme of easier plants that don't give me you know, pest issues, or, you know, they're just hardier plants. They don't require a whole bunch of maintenance. You know, they do need a little bit more water because they are bigger size and their leaves are huge, so they do soak up a lot of water. But I love picking plants that are pest resistant, they're easy to care for, and, you know, they just give me nice big leaves and I don't have to put so much effort into their care. So those are my top five easy to me uncommon houseplants. If you guys want to leave below what your easy uncommon houseplants are, I would be so curious to know. I do have other easy uncommon houseplants. Um, if you guys want me to do a part two of that, I can do that as well. So let me know in the comments section. But as always, please like my videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that way you know when I upload a new video. And me and Sage will see you in the next video. Oh, I'm going to pop over another subscriber comment, can't forget that. But we'll see you later. Bye.